Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 14, and today we're talking about the voice panel. So it's not labeled, but it is the panel right below the tuning panel right over here. So for this, let's go to our presets and let's select the init MS Rev 1 under the eight templates folder. So once we're here, we can increase our sustain, drop our cutoff a little bit, and maybe give us some release here. So we have something like that to work on. So first thing that we're going to see here in our tuning panel is this mode. And the first one is going to be poly. So this is polyphony when you're playing more notes than just one, right? You're playing chords or quite a few different crazy stuff. Cool. Makes sense. Now we have mono. So this is basically one key at a time. You can hold down as many keys as you want, but it's still going to register one note. Next up, we have legato. So this is kind of like mono, but the real difference is, is that it won't re-trigger the envelopes if you're holding down a note and you play other notes at the same time. So if that doesn't make sense, let's make something kind of interesting here. Let's get our envelope two to modulate this cutoff here. Let's get some nice resonance going. Okay, let's have something like this, right? We can hear that filter moving, that bow, bow sound, right? Let's increase our envelope here for our uh, filter. Okay, so if we were to be in mono mode here, every time we hit a note, it's going to trigger that bow, bow sound, right? It's a little bit faster. We can see it shaves off right here. We get that little higher end harmonic and then it kind of shaves off down over here. Or for this note, for example. We get that little higher end content up here, then it shaves it off, right? So every note will do that. And if we hit notes all the time, it really won't have, a, have enough time for the envelope to really work. So if we go over here to legato and be play a note and play other notes, it's not gonna re-trigger it. It's basically going to rest in that same spot until we let go of all the keys and press something again, and then it will re-trigger the envelope. So if I did the same thing, let's do this. Let's go to mono. So that's the main difference between the mono and legato. Next up we have duo. So this one is kind of interesting. So basically duo is a split voices kind of deal, right? So oscillator number two is gonna follow the highest notes and then oscillator number one is gonna follow the lowest notes. So if that doesn't make sense, bear with me here. So right now we have oscillator one that we're listening to. So what's gonna happen if I hold down a note and I try to play higher notes, nothing will register. If I hold down a note and then play lower notes on top of that, that registers. Now let's do the same thing with oscillator number two. So let's play a note and play higher notes. That works. Let's do the same thing, but with lower notes. It doesn't work. So keep in mind, once you're holding down a note and you try to do higher notes, it, that will work on oscillator number two. It won't play lower notes. And then the opposite is true for number one. So we had number one up again and played higher notes. There's nothing, but with lower notes, that's how that works. And then once you mix these two and then maybe change the, the pitch of these two, it's kind of interesting. So yeah, interesting way to think about that over here. Last up, we have poly two. So first of all, let's go back to poly number one and take a listen to this release phase. Let's give us a little bit more release here. Let's take this down here. No more modulation here. Okay, so we have something like this with one oscillator. Maybe get a little bit more release here, more cutoff. Okay, so take a listen to the release phases. I'm gonna play two notes and take a listen to both of these notes at the same time. So kind of get that into your brain, right? Now, if we go over to poly two, we'll do the same thing and take a listen how this sounds. Thank you. 
So what's happening here is once I hit another note, the release phase of the previous one is instantly stopped and the one that I pressed, that one is gonna take priority. Now this sounds weird when we're doing it like this. Kind of just sounds odd, maybe you it's not a choice we would like to make, but this is a good demonstration to see what this is really doing. This would be more so useful if you had, if you're playing a lot of chords, maybe something with a slow attack, slow release, a lot of stuff going on, and all those release phases of all those notes are still gonna be happening for a long time, and it's gonna really eat up your CPU. So maybe you wanna to switch to poly number two if you're doing something kind of like that. Because if you think about it, if you're doing like, let's say triple VCO and you have all three oscillators going, you have long release phases on all of those and then you have effects and then you have maybe like a chorus, a reverb, and then you start adding voices and then it's can, it can really add up really quickly. Then you're playing really crazy chords with all your like 15 fingers. It's eventually going to crap out your computer. So maybe poly two is something you want to keep in mind. So next up, let's go to our uh, new preset here and let's talk about this note priority. So keep in mind that note priority will only work in mono and legato modes. So let's go to mono, for example, and this right here, it says last. So let's bring our sustain up here, drag our cutoff down. So we have something like this, right? We play a note, let's play another note, and then release that note. It goes to the last note played. Maybe we do three. Cool. Now, if we go over here to the lowest, if we play a note here, and we go higher, nothing will register. However, if we go lower, it basically plays the lower notes. Now, if we go to the highest, we play a note, it plays the higher notes, and then if we try to do that, this, the same thing, but lower notes, that won't work. So that's basically how these three function in a nutshell. Next up, one of the most important things on this synth that you should be aware of is this accuracy down over here. So you have a couple different choices. You have draft, fast, great, divine. Long story short, basically, you're going to be dropping quality in what you're listening to based upon this being on draft. So basically, if you're selected on draft, this is basically a very CPU friendly version of the synth. The FM sounds pretty rough, and then the resonance is very primitive, as they say. So if your computer is kind of struggling to keep up and you want to just get the patch done and you know it sounds pretty good, but you just have to get a couple things right, maybe switch, switch it to draft. And then over here on this offline accuracy, you can always select best here and it's going to render it at a better quality than you're listening to. So kind of a cool little uh, function down over here. Then we have fast and fast. They say it's fine for older computers and are more polyphony and it's kind of, I guess, acceptable quality. I mean, that's kind of arbitrary, but hopefully that makes somewhat of a sense. And then you have great, which is the best compromise between quality and polyphony on higher powered computers. So pretty cool. Last but not least, you have divine and really you probably don't have to use divine all the time when you're when you're composing something you can, but you'll probably be fine with just great. So keep that in mind and also keep the multi core on and you should be good for the most part. And then like I said, down over here, you have the best or same. So for example, if I'm on draft and I want to render this in the best quality, I would have it as draft and then best. Let's say I'm in great and I like how this sounds. I don't want anything to change, even if it's a better quality. I just like the specific sound. Then you would select this and go to same. So that's basically how those two work over there. So moving on from there, we have these voices here. So voice is six and the stack over here. So this is this voice is basically setting the max voice count before the voice stealing occurs. And if we click this little button here, we have two, three, four, five, six, eight. 12 and 16 so quite a bit over here and then we have this stack here which sets the unison voices so something that maybe i don't think a lot of people are aware of it's a little bit different to do in diva so let's go back to our presets and let's select this ms rev one because it's my favorite and it sounds awesome let's bring our sustain up drag a little bit of a drag this down over here okay so let's say we want to add some unison right so if we go over here to stack let's say we want to add four voices right over here we can already hear on the on the top of it that we have more voices now than one. And it's cool, but it doesn't really sound like we're used to it, right? Because all of these voices are stacked right on top of each other. Now, if you want to spread these uni unison voices out like we normally do in a lot of synths, we want to select this over here in the amplifier pan, select where it says LFO2, and then go to the stack index, and then start cranking this pan mod. <laughs> We're still in uh this last year. Let's go back uh here. And 
and then we can increase this all the way up to 16 because we're kind of running out of voices. <laughs> A little bit loud here. So that's really the easiest way to add voices and spread them apart. So as a recap here, let's even just do an init preset. If you want some unison, stack, pick however many voices you want over here, or stack, how many stacks you want here. Go to this pan mod, select stack index, and crank this to the right, or how far you would really like to spread them. But also keep in mind, the more voices you add, like if you add six voices, and you have a lot of stuff going on, note stealing is going to occur and it's not going to sound how you think it was going to sound so make sure to add more voices as well it's insanely loud and keep in mind this is three oscillators going to the output and then we have 16 voices and then we're stacking them six times so it can get a lot it can get to crazy CPU usage after a while, which is maybe why you can always go to the poly two and then drop the accuracy down to like fast or draft and make sure the multi core is on. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. So hopefully that makes sense. That was the, uh, the voice panel in a nutshell. Later on, we're going to go over some of these other panels here as well. So hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.